Hey guys, Double Dog from Explominate.com back again with Warmack Blue on our Let's Learn, Let's Play Age of Wonders 3 Golden Realms. And we're going to jump right into it with the City UI. So, okay. Alright, so, so double click. Um, <laughs> you, you can probably dismiss those three tabs at the right. Oh, yeah, okay. And you can just right click to discard it. Yep. Um, now, also, a little hint. You see above the minimap, it says select production for whatever your city name is. Sometimes it'll also say uh, confirm army movement or an army requires your orders. All you have to do is hit F. Okay. And that'll, that'll bring you to where it is. And so keyboard shortcuts are very nice sometimes. Very good. Okay, so city UI, the first tab is units. On the left, I'm sorry, first tab on the left yep. side of the screen is units. And then you have upgrades, which are your buildings. Okay. And then you have city options. You can raise or plunder. Um, and then you have your existing upgrades, just so you can check. And then you can set a rally point if you'd like to. I only really do that late game when you're just using a city to produce units and you want to have the units you know move to a certain area of the map maybe gotcha is there any waypoint system in um endless legend uh you know just out of curiosity i don't think there is I, I wouldn't have used it so it wouldn't have been something i looked for and i don't remember seeing it i'm pretty familiar with the ui so i don't think there right. is i think there was one in endless space um, I can't remember. Okay, uh, well, yeah, that's remember. besides the point. <laughs> um, at the top middle, you have your, I guess, your flag to the left. You have the name of the city, and if there's a throne next to it, that's the throne city. Gotcha. Um, it tells you what it is. It's a village, and you can highlight it, and it'll say what the growth is and how much is needed to grow. Um and it'll tell you how many turns left. Below that is the city, whatever the city produces in terms of gold, mana, knowledge, production, and population. And all your cities are then added up to give you the, the very top, which is the overall. Gotcha. To the right of that, you have the city happiness. Um, you'll, we'll definitely want to keep an eye on this every now and then. Uh, for now, you should be getting plus 100. So you'll have plus 50 because it's the throne city, and then you'll have plus 50 because your leader is in the city. That is correct. And you might actually have more. I don't. Not in this case. I have a very even... Oh wait. Yeah, 450. So I've got the plus 50 from both, and I'm at 450 in total. One sec. You might be... Or do you have the city highlighted, or do you have the army highlighted? I have the city highlighted. At okay. least I think I do. Yeah. I have. It says Bode Wall, Throne of Rish Kion, Human Village, and then it's got the city happiness. And what is your city happiness? 450. Wow. What is that, happy or something? It is. It's very happy. Jeez. So that's a lot. You're getting, you're getting bonuses from your terrain I am I like my terrain probably a lot of bonuses I am it's plus 25 yeah that's or t I'm sorry it's a multiplier of 25 right? yeah I'm getting zero because dwarves like mountains okay and in underground areas there are no mountains there's only caves so gotcha. what does that do to your gold income if you highlight your uh, gold income you'll see that a village has a base income of 10 and then the next step up has a base income of 20. Um, oh, okay, so it's actually, uh, I'm getting six extra gold for being very happy. Okay, so I'm getting no extra gold. So you're making 36 gold. I'm making 39, actually. Oh, there we go, 39 <laughs> gold. <laughs> so you're making 39 gold and I'm only making 30 gold. So as you can see, I'm rich. Yeah, happy, yeah. <laughs> happiness. Happiness does have an effect on uh, gold. Excellent. All right. So, 
That oh, would... yeah. Below that is the Q. I'm sorry. There's okay. the, five, the five circles. Yep. That's the Q. And you can produce unlimited of something if you want. Um, towards the late game, when you've produced all the buildings that you want, you can just queue up the city to either, um, let's say, produce merchandise or produce housing. So, or, or produce, um, you know, research knowledge or something. So you can just have it researching forever and then it'll never bother you again with, you know, what do you want to produce? And that's by using the infinity symbol to the left? Yeah. Okay. We probably won't, we might not even get to, to use that. But right now, actually, you are producing merchandise, which for me, you can go ahead and highlight it. For me, it increases the gold by 10. And for me, it's 13. Right, so when you choose a unit, or we're going to choose a building or something, you're not going to be producing 39 gold. You'll be producing 39 minus 13, so 26. Gotcha. All right, so uh, what's a good thing to start building at first? Okay, so sometimes there are, people play it very differently. Some people focus on getting your village to grow as fast as possible. So that way you can get the most gold possible. Okay. Some people like to really focus on gold. Uh, that's definitely a viable strategy. Some people like to focus on production. Um, so in, in which case you would build a builder's hall because um, that produces additional 20 in or production. Right. Um, if you're focusing on gold, you would want to build a storehouse because that produces an additional 100 population. Um, if you were, if you wanted to focus on mana or mana, you could produce a shrine, which would give you an additional 10, you know, mana. Um, usually you want to, usually you want to produce economic support buildings first. Okay. I think most people tend to agree with that, um, unless... There's not really any race in this game that focuses heavily on getting units right away. Okay. Um, building up a strong economy is, is pretty good. So I would say it's best to start with either the Builder's Hall or the Storehouse. All right. So the Builder's Hall being a flat bonus to, to production forever. Yeah, for the city. Okay. Um, right. You know what might be good, though, is if you don't build anything yet, wait until you explore, and then at the end of your turn, depending on if you found, maybe if you found some population, or if you found some uh, refugees, then you might want to go with the Builder's Hall instead of the Storehouse, or let's say you found, I don't, even, I don't think there's any special sites that give you production, but if there were anything that boosted your production, then you would go with Storehouse. Gotcha. So, I so would leave actually, it maybe just for now. Yeah, at the end of the turn, we'll do something. Okay. So for now, a lot of people do a lot of different things. Again, I like to split up my army into two armies, um, and each leader is leading one. Okay. Some people like to take individual units and just fan out completely. Um, which is definitely viable. Okay. So it's up to you. But the first thing you want to do is um, go ahead and select your middle stack. I guess the stack on your city. And you can see if you select your stack and then you click on the stack again, that'll select the city. And then if you click on it again, it'll select the stack. So it's kind of like, you know, you can switch between the two very easily. All right, so splitting stacks and... I've got the one army, he's the main army selected. How do I use, or how do I go about maybe pulling just a few of the units out to give the other hero? Right. So, it's pretty easy. You can see how they have boots at the bottom. Yep. Um, and if you highlight it, just over any of them, you can see what they have. So you can see their move points, you can see their abilities. So, for example, dwarves have cave crawling. Which is very useful because I'm in caves. Uh, humans, I don't think they have any special movement abilities. It just Do says they? movement abilities walking. 
Yes, so they don't have any movement abilities. Uh, humans are actually a very boring race. Um, but what they lack in being boring is they make up in with consistency. So, you know, they're, they're jack of all trades, as in most cases. Now, right. what you do is whatever you want to separate, you just click the boot. And you can see how that turned green and the others turned red. Oh, cool. I like it. So you can click as many red boots as you want to turn green. Okay. And what you can do, I think you can shift. Uh, or is it control? Or is it alt? <laughs> I'm trying to think of. Okay, all you have to do is right click. So let's say you selected f four green boots. Right? Uh, so yeah, I selected two and then. Or whatever. Go ahead and right click on any of the boots. And you'll see how it switches between the two and the four. Gotcha. So if you wanted to just pull those two out, you could instead. Um. What I recommend first is you probably have a stack of six, and then you probably have one unit off to the left. Yep. And then you have your hero. So go ahead and take that one unit off to the left and combine it with your hero, not your leader. Combine it with your hero. Yeah, so I think just... I'm already ahead of you. I, I took two out of the main army and put it in with the hero, and then that extra unit I put in with the hero, so now they both have three apiece. You mean four apiece? Yeah, four pieces, including the hero. Okay. Does that work? I don't know if that was what you were going to look for, but I yeah, did that's it what, anyways. that's what I do. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and I like to keep the heroes separate so that... I don't know, some people, some people like to keep them together so they can be in the same battle to support each other. Right. Some people keep them separate. But what are the units, if you can just read them off real quick, what are the units that you got? In All right. your stacks. So my extra hero is an archdruid, and she's got a, a cavalry member, a pikeman, and an archer. And then the other one is the sorcerer, my leader. He's got a human priest, a halberder, or halberder, I guess is how you say it, and a, a civic guard. Halberdier, I think. Halberdier, yep, yeah, that's probably how you say it. And a civic guard. Okay. I was very. The reason I'm asking is I'm surprised that I got a dwarf infantry, but I got the dwarf firstborn, which is a tier three unit. Oh wow, nice. Um. So that means my upkeep. What is your upkeep? If you ho if you hover over your gold income. My upkeep is negative thirty two. Okay, so mine's negative forty, because you know I have that tier. Four tier 3 unit. I'm very surprised. I didn't think that I would get a tier 3 unit, which means that I think whatever you start off with is randomized as well. Okay. Um, well, there you go. Everything's randomized. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now you just go ahead and explore. Try to find... Um, you might see gold piles laying around, or you might see uh, scrolls of knowledge, which actually I see a scroll of knowledge. And all you do is you select the stack and you right click. Anyway. All right. Now, if so, I'm seeing stuff like underneath an army stack. I have a magma forge. Is that something that I'd want to go for? Okay, so that is that would be a special site. Um, magma forge. I'm trying to. What does it What does it give you? What does the magma forge give you? Um, you can just highlight over it tell you in just one second I'm turning down the, the music just a little bit okay um, it says that it gives me plus 10 production is it within your city boundaries it's just outside it's one tile outside of it okay yeah so you you are gonna want to take that um, if you click do you think you could take the units do you think you could take on the, the stack? yeah there's three halfling jesters Ooh, <laughs> I just got that in a game that I was playing. Halfling Jesters, you can go ahead and, and left click on the unit to see the details. Okay. Halfling Jesters are pretty nasty. Oh, um, wow. They fire fireworks, and, they <laughs> fi and it, it fires a... It has a, a cone, not a cone, but it fires one hex and then 
a circle of hexes around it is also uh, affected. Like an area of effect. Mm hmm. All right. And they're pretty nasty. Three jesters could probably, when when you fight, you'll see that it'll, it'll say probable victory. Okay. Let's it won't. Try this. It won't say very likely victory. It says probable victory. Yeah, and you can always back out. So should I attempt it? It's going to be a hard battle. That'll be a hard <laughs> battle for your first battle. <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on then. I'll wait just because I don't want to lose my very first battle. So yeah. how do I back out of it? So I hit, I guess, the, okay, abort attack. I see it. Abort attack, yeah. All right. And I found a, sh oh wait, I found something that added a shooting grounds at my main city. Very nice. So that must have been a free city upgrade. Very nice. All right, so I don't have to build that. <laughs> Right, and that, yeah, so that means, oh, dang, I found a, uh, you'll see, eventually you'll find hideouts, so I found a brigand hideout, and they're highlighted in red. Um, those are unit spawners, so I think every three turns they spawn a small stack of units. So the point of doing this is to scout around um, your hometown, or your home city or village or whatever, right. and you want to take out these unit producing stacks. Or these unit producing special sites. Okay. Because uh, they can, you know, be a pain in the long run. So right now, I don't... I'm almost out of movement points for everyone. I am out of movement points. Okay. So I have gone southwest and northeast. Oh, and speaking of which, I'm actually pretty much smack dab in the middle of the upper portion of the map on the surface really yeah i am smack dab center north underground oh cool so we're right above i'm probably right above you yeah so eventually we'll find you'll find an area where you can go underground you know it'll be like a a cavern entrance or something very cool all right so yeah we'll want to do that as soon as possible just so that um people will know what we're talking about or like you can follow me as I do my move and I can look at you as you do your move right so give me one second because I found a tome of knowledge which automatically researched one of my skills oh very good so I have to choose another one um, and I'll need a second to decide if you're done you can choose what building you want to build yeah, I didn't see anything in particular that would change my mind either way, so I'm going to go with the storehouse. Okay. So I was an arch druid, right? Uh, okay. All right. You know, I've never really actually taken the time to look at the overworld map, and it's just, it's much prettier than I, I remember it. I don't know if I just haven't paid attention to it or what, but it's very nice. The water looks really nice. The, the actual Everything... biomes look very nice. Yeah, everything looks really nice in motion. Like, if you just sit back and stare, you see some birds flying around. Oh, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> you really see the awesome. wind. You see the windmills in the background slowly going. Yeah, just... Cool, it's, right? a very, it's a very very good-looking game. And I like how if you pan out far enough, you can see the clouds moving across the screen. Right. Yeah, it is good. I don't... I haven't played Endless Legend. I've just watched videos, full-screen videos of you playing it. It definitely has a different art style. Um, I would say that this game feels a bit more magical. Yeah, I'd have to agree. And Endless Legend has a bit more... I don't even know how to describe it. It's very um, French. Like That's the only way I can describe it. <laughs> it's just so French. Yeah. It's just it's a unique art style. I've, I've, I mean, I've never seen anything like it before. And the only times that I see something as abstract and like unique as that is usually somewhere in Europe. And yeah, no, I I appreciate the art style of Endless Legend, but now that I'm really looking at this, I think I like it better, just because it feels more. It, it feels more fluid, more like natural and not so sterile. I, I think it's because there are birds and the water's flowing nicely and the birds, yeah, birds. 
the birds made it for you. Yeah, the birds made it for me. I'm telling you. <laughs> but you can, you know, you can see the the sway in the trees, and you know, it's oh, yeah. I, underground is less exciting, by the way. Oh well, <laughs> good thing I, still I started hear, on the surface then. You still hear cave sounds, and you see water drops. Yeah, and you get weird. You get weird, dense veg subterranean dense vegetation. It looks kind of uh, alien. Um, so that's interesting. Cool. But, you know, I think Endless Legend, it's supposed to look like that on purpose. It's supposed to be, like you said, kind of sterile. Yeah. Different games. I like them both. So far, okay. I'm, I'm actually getting into this. And this, that's saying something because I don't know I ever gave it a real good shake. So. Okay. So I am finished and I'm going to end my turn. All right. Doing the same. All right. A new so day now look, the AI is going right now. And. Actually, all of us are going right now. Okay, so just keep expanding out. Um, I might actually do a battle. Okay. And I don't know if you'll... S what happened? Oh, I... I what the heck? I don't know what happened. Um, oh, I can't do the battle yet. All right, so there's a brigand hideout here. And yeah, you're gonna want to get rid of that soon. You there's... know what we should do though. I wonder. <sighs> I, I'm saying that we we should try and find each other as soon as possible. Okay, I'll do but, that then. Before but we I... also do want to take out the brigands, or else that could really ruin. You know, it could make the game a whole lot harder. Well, I'll focus on finding you first. Actually, I just found a friendly a friendly outpost, so I found a. A minor faction, I guess. Yeah. Um, or I, they're calling they call them independents. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'll, I'll find you first, and then I'll focus on cleaning it because that's the only one that I see, and it's not terribly close to my city. So. Okay. That works for me. And I can hit in turn, right? And then it'll just wait for you if you haven't in tur ended turn yet. Right. Okay. I just want to make sure that I'm not forcing you to end your turn. No. I think I'm done. Um, I really... The Brigand Hideout is... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine he tiles away from my city. Yeah, that's about the same distance from me, that's too. That's pretty close. You definitely oh. do want to take it out. Okay. Even Maybe because it's a small map, too, and we're playing small map. Right, yeah. So... Okay, I'm going to end my turn. I don't think I can cast anything. You always want to check to see if there's something worth casting. Okay. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, my only spell is a tier 3 spell that I'm never going to be able to cast. Eventually you'll get there. Well, yeah. maybe not. Would you choose? Well, sorcerer. No, yeah, you'll get there. You'll get a lot of mana. Okay. Finish my turn. All right. Let's see if I can skip through this independent area. I can go to them and see, like, I, from what I remember, I can click on them and, yeah, that's right, negotiate, and then they'll, they'll offer me a quest if they'll join my empire, right? They or, might not offer it right away. There, It's not like Endless Legend where they have a quest waiting. Sometimes it takes, I mean, I think the game that I just played, I was telling you about that I just finished, um, I met the minor faction, the Fae, the fairy faction. Right. And they didn't offer me a single quest in my entire 90 turn game. So, so <laughs> I kind of jumped ahead and I negotiated with them and they offered to join me for 140 gold. So I did. Oh, what are you doing? You might not have enough for a hero. Oh no, you're right. See, I, I knew I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. I mean, you get another city, so yeah. your gold income will be a lot higher. But now you're going to have to manage two cities. I think you can handle it. All right, so I'm going to select production for them, and I'm probably going to do the Builder's Hall for these guys instead. Okay, yeah, that looks like I'll... That'll be my choice for the this city. Now, I'm going to go into a battle. Okay. I wonder if that's going to make me watch it. 
Yeah, I want to see what it does. Oh, pff. they just said the unit trembles in fear before me. So they're trying to flee the battle. And it was it three scoundrels. I'm going to give them no mercy. Remember, I'm being evil. Right. So I'm going to say no mercy. Okay. Do you see anything? Nope. You can see that I have like a blinking. It's blinking a lot in the bottom. Yeah. My flag is blinking. I'm going to hit manual combat. And oh yeah, so now I'm actually, I'm seeing you. This is, oh, this is cool. So that way I can actually like learn from you as you play. Oh, look at the underground map. Dang, I've never seen this map before. It's really pretty. <laughs> I don't, I don't play underground. Do you see what my camera's doing too, or? No, I, I think I can manipulate the camera myself. Yep, I can manipulate the camera myself. Okay, so right now the enemy's moving. Whoever attacks, the defenders always move first. Okay. Okay, so first off, you can hit F to kind of make it like a more cinematic scene. Oh, really cool. Um, and it looks really neat in this underground with the mushrooms. Kind of reminds me of the original, the first Elder Scrolls, or I guess the first big Elder Scrolls game, Morrowind. Right, when you got into that. Yeah, I forgot what they're called, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay, and you can see the, the water is reflecting the ceiling. Kind of. Like the... Yeah, it looks oh, like yeah. you can see you can see stalactites. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh my god! I just noticed that. All right, so I can see that there are three scoundrel units, and you can click them, and it'll show you their range and their movement. Um, okay. Let me, if, let me see if I have any spells that could. Wait, 30... so you've got? Do you have two armies? Yeah, remember I split them into two. And they're both attacking at the same time? Yeah, so you can have... Um, if you attack one hex, you can have a surrounding eight hexes. Or it's not eight, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can surround a group of units with six. Oh, wow, very cool. So, yeah, since it's a hex-based a hex system, any adjacent hexes will be brought into the battle. Um, it's not like Endless Legend where there's reinforcements. Whatever you bring in is what you bring in. Even if there's a unit one hex out of the limit of the battle, he will not join you. Okay. So usually that's that's also a, a pretty big point of the game where some people do like the part of Endless Legend where you can have, you know, you don't really have to worry about positioning your armies on the map because there's always going to be some reinforcements, maybe. In this game, there aren't reinforcements, so you really have to position your stacks in the right area when you attack. Yeah, Endless Legends reinforcements are three hexes out, so you can oh, be okay. pretty... I mean, the, the battles could occur pretty far away from the city or other units, and they'll still be included. Right. Okay, so... Now that I keep talking, um, <laughs> fight. Yeah, smite. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and cast a spell to see. Sixty percent, fifty percent. I'm gonna this orc scoundrel in the middle. Let's see. All right. Oh, nice. Smited him for twenty eight, so that almost killed him. He only has twelve hit points left. And where is my firstborn? My dwarf firstborn is at the bottom. Oh, the middle one. It's a very powerful unit. Oh, actually, this is a good chance to. So go ahead and click on the firstborn. Yep. And it'll say the tier, it'll say it's raised, and it'll say what it is. So it's an infantry unit. Um, it's a recruit, meaning that if you scroll all the way up to the top, there's a medal. In the top middle, it looks like there's an empty medal. Can you see that? If you click on the unit. Empty metal. Uh... Did you click on the unit? Yeah, I mean it's it's got the the unit card pulled up as dwarf four, firstborn, and then tier three upkeep sixteen, and I don't see. Oh no, you don't want the card. Can you? Oh okay, my bad. Just left click it. Yep. So. All right. And then there, at the very top center, it'll say it's rank. Gotcha. All right. So it says rank recruit. Yeah, and you can highlight it, and it'll show you all the different tiers. Now, the way you level up is by hitting other enemies. So some people like this where you can kind of farm your heroes, meaning that make sure your heroes get 
all the hits in or make sure your heroes get a lot of hits in in order to get them the most experience. It doesn't work like Fallen Enchantress where at the end of battle all the experience is split up evenly. Gotcha. It works based on who hits or if you cast a spell. So for example, if you go to my hero in the far left, you'll see that he has 5 XP out of 50 if you highlight wherever that metal was. Yep, I see it. That's because he hit an enemy with a spell. Gotcha. So you get experience for hits. All right, so let's see. Pikeman, no. I'm going to move my firstborn up. They're very tanky, so they'll be able to take any hits. <clears throat> Prospectors. Move them here. And I can hit them, um, but I have a line of sight penalty and a ranged penalty, so it's going to do very little damage. Okay, two damage. Pretty weak. <laughs> My hero... He can take some hits in the beginning, so I might expose him. Is he riding a warthog? Uh... It looks like it, doesn't it? That's pretty awesome. Yeah, he is riding an armored warthog. <laughs> That's awesome. And I think my other hero is riding, same thing, an armored warthog. Yours will be riding something, too. Yeah, they're riding horses. They're pretty standard. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, humans. Boring humans. Yeah, exactly. Well, at least it's simple, though. No, I do have to break through these walls, but I can't right away. I don't even think I can attack him. Let's see, Dwarf Boar Riders, or Pikemen, Axemen. Axemen have shields. So... I'm just... I'm, all I'm doing is moving my units forward. That's it. Now, the way... It does have an action point system. So if you click, can you see the green, the yellow, and the orange? I can, yeah. So green was uses one action point. Uh, yellow it uses two action points and orange uses three action points to get there and then once you're there you you can use the remaining action points to attack um, some units can attack up to three times gotcha or you can put your units into guard mode which will give them a boost to defense and resistance and it'll be it'll mean they can't be flanked so okay. I do wish the game used a similar system as um, Sorcerer King where units had a zone of control that you couldn't pass you know basically you can't get behind units because sometimes it is really cheap how units just run behind you and flank you Yeah. but it is part of the strategy like if they can do it you can do it so it is what it is Okay, and that's all I can do. Now, instead of putting everyone into guard mode by highlighting them and hitting three, all I have to do is hit enter, and it'll put anyone with leftover action points into guard mode. Oh, really cool. I didn't know that. So, they're oh, all in guard mode yeah, right I see now. That. So, he attacked. Let's see. Okay, they're not doing much damage because my guys are in guard mode. But one damage. Big deal. Okay, so it is my turn, and I can cast a spell, but I'm not going to. Hmm. This is the problem. You have to spend a turn to pretty much bash down things. So I'm gonna my my firstborn is go, gonna go ahead and bash down the gates. Okay. And now he can't do anything. He can't even guard, because I used three action points to do that. Um, let's see, my main guy. Ooh, that does a lot of damage. My uh, my main arch druid. He can shoot his longbow up to three times, and it's an arcing shot, so it goes over fences. And if a unit was standing in front of him, it would go over the unit as well. Oh, nice. Um, and it does 9 to 13 times 3, so 9 
times three is 20... Uh, 27. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and he has 35 hit points, which isn't quite enough to kill. So I want to bring... Uh, I don't... I want to bring my prospectors a little bit closer. Uh, it's a straight shot. They have a straight shot. So... It, try here oh okay 10 to 14 damage and then so they gain four, ex four experience and then my hero will finish them off oh maybe yeah finished them off now the way uh, things work if an enemy has one hit point they still do full damage it's not yeah. like it's not um you know, as you see units die, they'll do less damage. I like that a lot, meaning you have to really take out, you have to focus fire pretty much. You can't just leave weak units on the field. Right, and I think that's, from what I understand, that was a decision based on the old games where the units were just singular, like, individuals, and they just sort of left it that same mechanic. But, you know, obviously now you're represented by... Party. Small, yeah, a little party. Yeah, uh, there was a, a lot of people did not like that at all. I didn't like it at first, but I think, you know, now that, now that you explain it like that, like that, you need to kind of ensure that each unit's, you know, beaten before you move on to the next. I think that makes sense. Yeah. But it's, it's weird to see, like, you know, when it starts to get down, and they whittle the party down to like two units. Or two little individual units, and they're still doing the same amount of damage that the six or eight individual units did. It does. It looks a little strange. It does. Yeah, you're right, and that's. I think that was the main complaint. Um. I think everyone has gone, have they? Oh. I don't think your main hero. Yep. Yeah, there you go. The Axemen. Uh, I'm not going to need him. I'm just going to leave him. Okay. What are they going to do? Fire at my hero? Ow. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know why they did that. So what I can do, I'll, maybe I'll try and show you the flanking mechanics. Um, is this going to kill him? Five to... So let me move up here. up here. Nine to thirteen. Okay, this will not kill them. So when I attack them, um, with my Abraxas Thistlewood with the bow, they will turn to face me. So now they turned, and they used up some of their action points. So now I can bring my f firstborn behind them and get another flanking attack, and that'll take them out. So instead of just sending the firstborn in to take a bunch of damage, I used my hero to first draw their attention, and then I sent my melee unit in behind them. Very cool. You know what? I think that'll end up being a very good stopping point for this episode. Okay. Yeah, that's the most basic battle that you could get or that you could do, they get a lot more complicated than that. Um, but yeah, you can take your time. Very take good. your time, think patiently, then you can usually, you do not want to lose units, by the way. Yeah, see, that's the thing, I mean, with my limited play time, I, I've managed to make quite a few mistakes when it came to tactical battles, so I'm glad to see, or I'm glad to see you do it so that I can learn from it, so... That works. Right. The next battle, what you're going to do is you're going to go fight those brigands. Okay. Excellent. Or the, I'm sorry, not the next battle. The next... Uh, next episode. Next episode. You're going to fight the brigands. Awesome. And then we're going to go over a battle. All right. Well, that's something to look forward to. So stay tuned next time for episode three. And until then, thanks for watching. This is Devil Dog and Warmack Blue signing off.